good afternoon everyone my name is Justin and if you're watching this video you're here today to learn how to make some candles just to show you what we have to begin with we have our candle mold this is a primitive candle mold I purchased this at an antique store a little while back and um, I have some string here this is pre dipped in some beeswax so that way it's coated uh, really nice and this is what we're gonna use for our wick then you'll notice here this big block of fat I mean beeswax we're not using fat we're not making tallow candles so hopefully these these candles will smell a lot better than what you would find uh, with a bee, uh, beef fat or sheep fat or pig fat even so no tallow candles here we're not in any Civil War confinement what we're gonna do is melt this beeswax I have just a uh, pot that I've put some beeswax and I've started the melting process it's just sitting over here on a little electric stove and I'll show you what that looks like in just a second um, to begin with you notice that these big blocks that I have of beeswax so just a helpful hint for anyone that's using beeswax this is hard to cut so you're gonna want to use if you can get some beeswax in smaller strips I would do that this this I had to heat up a knife over here in my uh, fireplace to get it hot enough to melt through this because sawing on it was just it was ridiculous so you don't want to do that if you can get smaller pieces of beeswax if you can it's much easier to work with unless you got a big pot and you're gonna melt this brick in it these are five pound bricks a piece so um, I purchased these this way if you've watched some of my other videos you know that I have a beehive that I'm getting ready to start up here in another couple weeks I have some bees that are coming about three pounds and I'm gonna get that started so I didn't render this beeswax on my own so just a little tip uh, to melt in your own beeswax you want to get smaller bricks otherwise it's just a little difficult to work with but it can be done obviously so once you have your beeswax and you've got it melting, get your candle mold prepped. The process will be the same. What you'll want to do is you'll want to take your wick and you'll measure it out first. And then two, three. Then I just did that 12 times so that I knew the length of string that I needed to cut. Gave myself a little extra room, about six inches, and cut that string. And then I started weaving it through. Now to begin with, what I did was this is total of 12, but what made the most sense for me, I know that I want to have things evenly to where I can have my strings come up in the center of the hole, as you see here. Because you don't want, when you're done making your candle, you don't want your, your wick to be all the way to the outside or even sticking just out of your candle. So you want them to come straight up in the centers of your holes. So the way I did that was I weaved it through the first candle mold, and then I came up and went through the next one right next to it. And then I weaved it back through the bottom of the middle hole. And then just right next to it, that candle, you can see. So in the end, it looked like that for the first rung. Bottom kind of looks a little crazy. There's only two knots in this whole, this whole process. And that was the knot that I made when I first came up with my first string. And then the knot I made on the last string. So that way it kind of helped to draw it a little tight. So you want to give yourself a little room there. Once I finished and got everything set to where I needed it to be, I just took a little bit of the beeswax that I had and plugged these holes. So that way the wax won't leak out the bottom once I pour. So once you have your holes set, then you can just take some coat hanger this is not my idea I, typically people use a stick or something I watched a video the channels called Townsend's if you get a chance you should check them out but it's an 18th century lifestyle um, channel so he shows you all about you know how to do different things it's a really good channel to watch I uh, recommend it highly once you have it set your wax that should be melting over on the side you want to have this melted about 145 to 150 degrees nice and manageable so it's not too hot so what you'll do after you've got your candles set up and just in a good place you will take your hot wax and you're just gonna pour it
All right, so if you'll notice, I'm not sure if you can see, but once you've made the pour and this wax starts to cool, you'll see that it shrinks a little bit. So there's a little bit more that needs to be poured in just to fill these holes to the top. What I'm gonna do here is, uh, and what you'll wanna do as well, is once this cools down completely, so my first thought is, Oh, what I, what I would do is throw it in a freezer, right? Cool down and half the time. Not a good idea. You want them to cool down naturally. If you live in an area like me where it's more, it's mostly warm anyway, it'll take it a little bit longer to cool down. Like I said, my first thought would be put this in a freezer and let it cool down. But it'll just cause cracks. It'll it'll be too fast. You don't want to cool you don't want to cool it down that fast. And if I were in a colder climate, you know, it might affect it that way as well. So you just want it to naturally cool down. So I'll just leave it inside. I'll probably set it right here on my hearth. And once it gets cool, probably 12 hours, maybe even um, tomorrow, I'll come in and take a look at it. And you might be thinking, did he use anything to coat the inside of this mold? That way it'll release easier. And I did. So you can use something like a silicone release spray. Vegetable oil will work just fine or anything. Um, I sprayed it down into each of these holes a couple days ago. I sprayed it down there, hopefully that was good enough. So, like I said, we'll let this cool down for now. We'll come back and uh, take a look at it later and see what she looks like. All right, so it's been about 24 hours. We're gonna go ahead and see if we can't get these candles pulled out of their candle molds. Last night, about after about six hours, I wanted to see just how loose some of these candles were, so I started trying to move them around and see if I couldn't get one free, so. Here's one, this is after six hours, so it worked just fine. I uh, probably could have pulled the rest out, but I thought I'd just uh, save it for the video so that I could show you folks. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull these wires out. I don't think I need them anymore to tug or pull on anything. So I did clean all the wax off the top. So if you remember, we had the whole top covered in wax it just pulled up really easy i just took uh my knife and just kind of scored around the holes and it all just lifted up and it can all be reused and melted back down what i'm going to do though is cut these ends so that way we can start lifting these candles out so i got my scissors on the swiss army pocket knife and i'll just snip these candle wicks on the bottom side that way you don't want to go tugging on these things with them secured down here. It'd be like you pull them right in two. All right, I also snipped the wicks that had the knots tied into them. If you're using a, one of these old candle molds, there is a fold at the bottom of these. You want to make sure that the wick, look at that, the candle's just dropping out. You want to make sure that the wick isn't um, caught in that as you're pulling through. So. These are just coming out pretty nice. As I've seen uh, demonstrated in a couple other videos, the best way to get these out if they are a little stiff because they were, is to push down. So if you just take and push these down, it makes it a lot easier because the wax, it shrinks after it, uh, in the molds after it cools down a bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and snip a couple of these. That way I can get the ones that are loose out. And I haven't yet used this candle mold, so I don't know if you can see on the video. I did try and clean these out. So there is a little bit of speck, so probably a little rust and things like that from what was inside of these candle molds. And it's showing up on the candles. I'm not that worried about it, but I'll, uh, you know, after the next time, it'll probably be much cleaner. Came out a little darker. So I'll be using these, you know, around the house so it doesn't really matter for me. All right. There's a little. There you go. So there are some tricks when they are stuck that I've found out to get these to come loose. And if I can't get a few of them loose, I might demonstrate it to you. Okay, so these came out just fine. 
And again, I did use my um, lubricant spray, the silicone mold release. I did use that, but I used it a couple days prior to even pouring any wax into the molds. So, all right, so here are our candles. They all came out. We had one candle that was difficult to, uh, to get pulled out of here. As I was trying to pull it out, the wick broke on the back. So there was no way to get a hold of that candle really without, um, without heating it up as far as I could tell. So what I did was I held it upside down and I had to build a fire a little bit bigger than what a Bic would provide so that I could heat up the entire mold and it fell right out. Um, outside of that, I wouldn't recommend doing that just because, unless you absolutely have to, just because it can cause your welds to heat up as well and they can start to run and release uh, your welds on these old primitive uh, candle molds so you'll want to be careful if you have to do that outside of of that just use your vegetable oil or your um, mold silicone mold release spray and you shouldn't have any trouble this being the first time that i've ever used this there was still a lot of rust and just pieces that were down at the at the very bottom that i just couldn't get a hold of to get clean and that ended up in our candles as you see uh, they are a little discolored. They're not completely yellow and um, pretty as you would expect to see in a store or something. But that that's to be expected from using an old candle mold uh, like this. So hopefully the next go around with this candle mold, it'll be much cleaner and they'll they'll look like those pretty store bought candles. So outside of that, I still don't, I wouldn't mind cleaning these down and um, and. I'm going to use them here in the house whenever I need to. They'll go in a box and when the power goes out, I'll use them or I, I wouldn't even mind using one for, uh, for a dinner. So, um, you know, they're dirty and she'll believe that they are, uh, she'll believe I made them. Right. So guys, don't worry about the, uh, dirt on the first go around. If you've got an old candle, um, just light them up and they'll burn just the same. So I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day.